in the Elements of Self-Defense Law video series leading up to this one. We talked about your actions and behavior prior to you being attacked. Now we're going to talk about the level of your defensive response, otherwise known in legalese as proportionality. If this is your first time here, be sure to click the subscribe button and click the notification bell to stay updated on all the Defensive Firearms Instruction YouTube videos. Stay to the end of this video for a recommendation of two nationally recognized subject matter experts on the larger topic of self-defense in general, not just the physical skills part. The third element of legal self-defense is proportionality. The actual level and amount and duration of the force that you use in your defense must fall into what I categorize as the Goldilocks principle. Not too soon, not too much, not too long. It has to be just right. Here we go. I'm Riley Schrader with Defensive Firearms Instruction. I help new and veteran shooters get and improve their defensive shooting skills by teaching the art, science, and laws of self-defense, whether guns are involved or not. I'm not an attorney, I'm not practicing law, and this is not legal advice. Short version, again from 30,000 feet, in the legal self-defense world, there are two separate classifications of force, non-deadly and deadly. You as the defender may only use an amount of force commensurate to the level of force being used against you. This is not to say that you may only trade equal blows with your attacker until someone gives up. It does mean that if your attacker is only using non-deadly force against you, you may not use deadly force against him or her. And now for the variables. You knew that they were coming, didn't you? First of all, let's get one thing straight. Just because a person does not have a weapon in his or her hand does not mean that they are not a deadly threat against you. Many victims have been beaten into a hospital or killed by suspects with only bare fists. There are two perspectives from which proportionality will be evaluated, the attacking force and the defensive force. Additionally, the intensity and duration of force will be assessed to determine the appropriateness. Over all of this, the totality of circumstances will be used to evaluate the force used. And as I said earlier, and it bears repeating, proportionality does not mean using the same type of force. It does mean that if the force being used against you is in the non-deadly force category, you may not use the higher level of deadly force in your defense. However, the factors of intensity and duration as well as a concept known as disparity of force can easily escalate non-deadly force into the deadly force category. Your job, being to stay out of the hospital and or out of jail, will be to evaluate the situation accurately enough and soon enough to make a decision of whether to stay or go. If you can identify a go situation soon enough to take advantage of it, it will almost always be the better choice. However, Life doesn't always give us the choices that we want. If all other factors being equal, you choose to stay, now you will need to decide when to use enough force soon enough to make a difference. And remember, this is all dependent on the attacker's behavior towards you. Not only do you have to recognize a dangerous situation, you have to be able to evaluate whether it is in the non-deadly or deadly category, and then 
presuming that you have been compelled by the attacker's actions to use an amount of force to defend yourself, you must know when to de-escalate your use of force. Again, not too soon, not too little, not too much, and not too long. If this all sounds like this self-defense thing is getting more and more complicated, you're right. It is complicated. It's a lot more complicated than most people realize. Some of the concepts can be confusing, especially when your emotions of fear and anger are involved, and the information and laws themselves can be conflicting. But because you're being responsible and educating yourself about this serious topic, you'll be better informed and have the opportunity to make better decisions about your actions. I go into detail on each of these elements of lawful self-defense as well as the variables that affect each one of them in my self-defense laws presentation. Mark McYoung and Jenna Meek co-authored an excellent book, What You Don't Know Can Kill You. It talks about the many components of self-defense that go far beyond the physical skills of combatives or shooting with lots of discussion on the before components and the after components. Consider this, reading for your complete defensive skill set. As always, please don't take my word for any of this. Do your own research and verify what I've said from other subject matter experts. If you're in the Southern California area and you'd like to schedule a presentation of the elements of self-defense law to your group, send me an email through my website. The link is in the description. If you like this video and want to learn more about the elements of self-defense law, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell to stay updated on the rest of the elements of self-defense law series. There's lots more info coming. I'm Riley Schrader. Thanks for watching and see you next time with Defensive Firearms Instruction.